Buongiorno, my soccer universe, to my official preview of Serie A. Yes, Serie A will get a preview like the Austrian Bundesliga. Uh, because A, I'm not on vacation anymore, and B, it's the best league you're not watching. Absolutely, 100%. Like last season, uh, which in the end did not turn out to have a very exciting title race, but at the onset, it is not very, very, very clear who will become champions in Serie A uh, to begin with. So, and that is always uh, quite exciting. I would say, technically, maybe there's up to seven teams that you could put in a CAD, CAD category as the top teams in the league. Um, realistically, I would probably narrow it down to five, but, and then maybe take one out to put on the very top. Let's see, maybe two, as you will see my, the ratings that I uh, take uh, show uh, that it will be a head-to-head -head race, but we'll look at the predictions a little bit later. Also, if you're only occasionally following Serie A, um, um, what makes this season also very exciting is that over, over the summer, uh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 teams have changed their coaches. So uh, complete upheaval. And it starts with the champions who are in severe financial trouble where Conte, after he realized that, said, oh no, goodbye, ciao, I should say. And they got Simone Inzaghi. Then they lost Hakimi to PSG, which was a big loss, but you thought that with this they could actually uh, recoup some of the losses. But now they have lost also Lukaku, which gave them a lot of money. Yes, they got um, Denzel uh, Dumf Dumfries uh, in and also Edin Dzeko, which is so funny. I mean, uh, Inter has been uh, very often uh, snatching old players from Roma. I'm thinking for instance, Nainggolan, which does not make much sense to me. I mean, uh, you want to build a squad, which Admittedly, they have done, but at a huge cost, and let's see. Inter is one of those teams where you really do not know where they are. I think if they can hold on to Lautaro Martinez, uh, they still have Barella, they still have a very good defense. I think Inter probably will still be very much in a top four conversation. However, um, I'm not sure how Simone Inzaghi will fit in the whole um set up. So this is one exciting, uh, you know, we will have to see whether it's exciting, but it, it's one of those big upheavals. I do not necessarily expect Inter to repeat as champions, uh, quite far from. So I mean, uh, as a Milan fan, I, I did not like the move per se, that Cialanoglu went from um, uh, Milan to Inter, but I understand the move because um, he could get a little bit more salary at Inter. Milan was, I honestly have, have to say, most Milan fans were not very impressed by his performances. Yes, he was a, a leading player in the squad, but on the other side, I have, have to say, he was so inconsistent that I'm actually not too unhappy to see him go. And he, he's supposedly a free kick specialist. No, I mean, he scored how many? Uh, two free kick goals, I can remember. It did not it did not uh, pan out overall um I, I was not crying seeing him leave which also lead, uh, leads us straight into Milan where I actually have have to say I'm not uh 100 Milan kept of course because the coach staff Stefan Pelle I'm not 100 yet convinced of their transfer window uh, name, namely because there is no number 10 replacement there. However, I really think that overall the bring Giroud in will prove uh, cool, keeping Fika Tamori. Um, I think Brahim Diaz back. Uh, now if you can extend Cassier, that would be, uh, that, 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 that was super, super important. I think the master stroke was getting rid of Dolla Roma and bringing in Mike Magnon. Um, a keeper that might not be as good as the Italian national team goalkeeper, but a keeper that will the drop in quality will not be as big. And he has a kind of a swagger that probably will him endear him to the Rossonero fans. 
very, very, very quick, very quickly. Another team that kept their coaches, of course, Atalanta, who uh, lost a lot of players, but they always do. And those players usually don't do well at, 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 at new, new clubs. I actually would think that Atalanta is, has definitely gotten an outside shot at the Scudetto. Uh, if they for once could not only finish a season strong, but also start a season strong, um, I think they will be right up up there. Uh, but to me, and before we lo uh, look at it, I think the biggest one, the biggest title contenders must be Juventus. Uh, they bring now in Locatelli, which is a Milan fan, hurts a little bit. But uh, to be honest, I think if he would have stayed, stayed in Milan, I don't think he would have developed as much as he did as Sassuolo. Now Juventus will have them. Uh, having bringing Bonucci and Kikelini and Ronaldo, yes, it's a very aging squad. I still am very much uh, wondering about the. Um, Midfield, however, you have a Chiesa, you have a Locatelli, maybe Loha Locatelli can keep things a little bit together. Uh, the defense will be strong. Uh, maybe Juventus should slowly start shopping for a goalkeeper, but the main reason why I think that Juventus will uh, be the overwhelming favorite is the proper Max Allegri. Someone who knows his excesses and O's, and therefore I think he will uh, bring Juve back into title contention. Um, Napoli, I was, I mean, that they didn't keep Gattuso to me is a little bit uh, crazy uh, because he, honestly, Gattuso did an awesome job for Napoli. However, uh, then there were all kinds of talks of managers running around which all would have made sense and then they get the least sensically of them all in uh, Spalletti. Don't get me wrong, I think Spalletti is a good manager, uh, but he's crazy and in that sense he probably fits the city very, very, very well. The big thing is, will Insigne actually stay on? Uh, also, uh, what and this is for them for the jersey re uh, review, I have not seen the jersey jerseys yet, but Armani is producing Napoli jerseys, making them instantly very much uh, an item that I would like to have, because Armani Hmm, that sounds very interesting, <laughs> at, at least. Um, which leaves to the two Roman teams that I want to talk about, uh, who have major appointments. Uh, let's start with a small appointment with Lazio, and one that actually will work probably better. Sari at Lazio, it will probably take a little bit getting used to, but I think that that is a match that I can see very well working because Inzaghi already had a kind of symptom style. Sarri is maybe a little bit more dogmatic uh, but uh, if the players buy into that and he can play the way he wants to play watch out for Lazio scoring tons of goals and despite a fan base that is not very endearing uh, will be very endearing team to watch uh, in, 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 in Serie A which honestly Roma is the other one, the other WTF signing. Yes, you want to make a splash. You got Jose Mourinho. This Roma team should have gotten, they have played such wonderful offensive uh, soccer under Paulo Fonseca. I still think, yes, it was under, under them, but just look at the list of injuries and so on. Uh, I actually think firing Fonseca was not the best move for Roma. Now you got the big name. The big signing for Roma is Jose Mourinho. Of course, you also got Tammy Abraham now, uh, which continues like Eng young Englishman going to Serie A to learn something. I actually like that connection. Uh, it also puts a little bit more of the international focus than onto Serie A, which is uh, always a good thing to see. Uh, Roma to have a pretty good squad if everyone is healthy. But defense is not their forte. Maybe that's why you bring in uh, Mourinho. I actually think, and I heard it, and I totally, totally, totally agree. Um, I think this might not be a success because of Mourinho. And maybe not even because of his tactics, because he will try to pick fights left and right. And that's not a, a good um, way of dealing with things. So, um, yeah, I also am a little bit, bit, bit worried Maybe Mourinho, uh, when he was at Porto, I mean, he was also a pragmatic manager, but he uh, proved to be very adaptable. It started at Inter when he got this defensive 
style of play and that he now tried to introduce to Spurs and so on. Um, have to see. I hope he is adaptable. I hope he is, he is adaptable and sees what he can do for the squad. I mean, in his press conference, he said everyone should have fun playing. Yeah, uh, good luck having fun with playing for Mourinho. The United players surely didn't have fun, and the Spurs players at the end as well. Real Madrid, no, they didn't want to play with uh, under Mourinho anymore. So, uh, it will be very, very, very interesting how this appointment will work out. So those are the top seven teams. I mean, there have been some other interesting opponents. Fiorentina got Italiana from Spezia, who is probably the added on value for Spezia that kept them up. This either will work spectacularly and bring Fiorentina where they ought to be. I think Fiorentina should definitely be among the top teams in Italy. They have the cloud for that. Um, but again, we have to see how it, how, how, how it works out because uh, when those uh, hotshot managers go then to, especially if you're, uh, if, if, if you're in Tina, it might, it, there's a good chance that it might not work out as well. Uh, also, Ivan Juric left from Verona uh, to join Torino, which seems a little bit an odd appointment. Um, Juric a little bit like a Gasparini clone in a way. Um, I also, I mean, Torino for me is a team that should be up there. So uh, I, I'm definitely interested in seeing that. Uh, Parma's Roberto D'Aversa went to Sampdoria, which is actually a permitted move because the two fans are having a Lazio, so they are befriended. Um, let's see how his style will work at Sampdoria. Uh, what the others? I mean, uh, Sassuolo lost the Zerbi to Shakhtar, so I'm curious. Uh, they took them the coach from a newly promoted Empoli, Dionisi. I think Spezia hiring Thiago Motta uh, doesn't seem to be a very, very um, inspired move, to be honest. So yeah, uh, those are some of the teams where I think uh, it's definitely interesting what will happen. So... Um, here are my predictions from the model. I mean, this is not my first person pre 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 predictions, but these are the predictions that uh, my model uh, spit out when you take out all the ratings and the uh, uh, bookmakers also. Well, what I did, I took the uh, Club ILO rating, I took the um, uh, SBI rating, and the SBI rating takes a little bit squad strength into account. The ELO rating only past performances. That's why Inter is riding high. And the bookies are also seeing uh, Juve and Inter on the front. So that's why you get the following. Uh, this stands here that Juve and Inter are close together. Um, then Atalanta, Napoli, Milan in fifth, Roma and Lazio at the moment. I think if Insigne would move, let's say, to either one of the Milan clubs, this could actually shift things around as well. Um, uh, also, um, you see that Sassoli still had a Fiorentina, but Fiorentina always should be kind of this best of the rest team. Sassuolo, I'm not sure if they will keep keep it up this season. We have a broad midfield. I mean, I have not talked about uh, Bologna, where Marco Arnautovic is now... Uh, playing but uh, I have some serious doubts about their defense so looking at that I'm of course very much interested in what Venezia will do but I have to say I would agree that Venezia Sal Salernitana seem to be teams destined to go down and I also think Spezia without Italiano the squad is simply not deep enough so yeah uh, I wanna so that's where I see it going I mean we have to I largely agree I as a Milan fan to be honest, I think top four is possible, especially if we, uh, if Milan gets another uh, offensive midfield signing. I mean, getting Florenzi in will pro provide a lot of variety. Um, gotta see. But I could see Milan uh, easily finishing in the top four again, but it will be a battle. It will be a battle. Uh, and I'm also in in interested to see how the Giroud-Ibrahimovic uh, partnership, meaning I don't think they will play together, but one will come in for the other or one will play in the Champions League and so on. So uh, that is something that I uh, want to see. I want to leave you, I actually started with that uh, for the Austrian Bundesliga, but I, I want to leave you with another reason why you should watch uh, Serie A because Serie A is a very uh, offensive league now. 
belying their, their tradition. Um, many, many goals are, are, are scored in the top five leagues. I think Italy had the most average goals per game. And you can see this again. I take here the SBI rating and they also have kind of offensive and defensive rating. And you see that all the top teams, the black line, I mean, the, the gray dots are all the teams that I'm taking. This is over... Um, 600, 700 teams from all over Europe's uh, top leagues, main, namely, uh, yeah, the top leagues and then uh, st uh, teams from the European competitions thro thrown in and the red dots are the Serie A teams in there. And you see that especially on top, the black line is the trend line and then the red dots lie, especially for the, for the top teams, are uh, ahead of that line. Not crazily, but it gives you an idea that, yeah, Goals are scored defensively. Also, it's very close to the line, so um, there's still some defensive sounds, or sounds, but the offensive prowess will be in there as well. Um, of course, we have to see if Cristiano Ronaldo will stay at Juventus. Um, if not, uh, if he would, I would still think he's probably uh, poised to be the league's top scorer. Although Immobile will always give him a run for his for his money. So yeah, I'm again, as usual, super excited about Serie A starting. Um, I cannot wait. The first round of matches sees them opening on uh, Saturday with Inter uh, against Genoa. Um, I have to look, I mean, Torino, Atalanta is kind of, you know, there, there is a certain rivalry there that is interesting. I think Roma Fiorentina is a wonderful uh, opening fixture for uh, the Sunday games and then uh, Milan starts with uh, a game at Sampdoria which is also a very promising one. Um, I want to see what Valvanese Val 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 will do against Napoli and I'm especially looking forward to those Armani jerseys. There have been also quite some interesting jerseys released unfortunately not for Milan uh, but we'll talk about those when I finally get to do my Serie A jersey review. So yeah um, let me know who you support in Serie A, how do you see things going forward, um, do you agree with uh, my model predictions or not, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon about Serie A and more, bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!